Hello all. In this video, we are going to discuss virtual function, early binding and late binding. We have planned to create couple of videos which will discuss virtual function in detail. In this video, we are going to introduce virtual function. Let's create a class base. We'll put one function called as display this in this uh, base class and we'll display that it is base class. Uh, let's create another class called as sub1 which will publicly inherit base class. It's a public inheritance. We have discussed this concept in detail already, so I will not go in uh, the details of what is a public, what is the meaning of public base. So, we will add display function in the subclass 1 also. And in this function, we will display the message sub 1. Now here we have one base class and one subclass. Subclass has inherited base and both classes have function called as this. Now let's create a main method and we will create object of base class base O and we will create the object of sub1 class let's say S1. Now uh, if I call O.disp then it is going to call obviously the display method of a base class and if I say s1 dot disk then it is going to call the display method of sub1 class. Let's try to compile and run. Oh, uh, I have made a mistake. Here it's semicolon. Okay, let's compile. Okay, it's running. Now here you can clearly see that the first object which is object of base has called its own method object of sub has called display function of its own. So we have output put base and sub1. Now what if we uh, do it like this. Let's, let's delete this calls and now we have object of sub then we have object of base but the base will not create its own copy but it will copy everything from s1 which is object of sub1 then let's compile and see what will be the output of this program oh i haven't called i should call s1 dot this now here you can see that S1 is calling sub1. Now if I call o.dus, it is calling the base class method. Now even if object of o, it's not really pointing to its own copy, it is having the address of S1. But when you call o.dus, one may think that it is an object of sub. So it may call the method of sub, but it is not going to happen. It is going to call the method of base class. Now, uh, even if you declare, uh, let's declare this function as virtual. Right now also, there will be no effect on the output. Still, we will have output of uh, like o.disp calls the base class method. Why is it so? because it is base o it's object of base class and when you call a display function it's always going to keep its own copy for the execution now what if you are not creating object of base and instead you create pointer of base class let's do it now we will just re replace this o with star o and s1 
now as it's in a pointer i must not i may not i i should not copy the s1 as it is i should copy the address of s1 i should copy the address of s1 and let's delete this virtual keyword now we we are at the uh, back of the story just instead of having a plain object we have a pointer of base class and then we are copying the address of s1 inside o and then i'm calling o dot disk okay i should make necessary changes as it's a pointer now i have to use arrow operator while calling the display function let's compile and run so it's executing again there is no effect it is still calling the method of base class now let's see what happens in this case if we add a virtual keyword compile run and here the output has changed now the program is not calling the method of a base class but it is calling the method of sub1 now here early binding and late binding concept is coming in picture what has happened is when compiler like uh, let's write the code for that so when compiler says base o this time compiler knows that it is object of base class and it really binds all the functions which are from base so if i say base dot disk then compiler can figure out that it has to call the method of base class so this binding is early binding which is happening at a compile time but in this second case when o is not object o is a pointer in this case the compiler can't figure out which display function will be called whether the o's display function should be called which is object of base or a pointer of base or the display of s1 must be called which is a subclass and both classes have display function so this can't be figured out at a compile time so it is left to be decided at run time so whenever this kind of binding is going to happen at a run time we also refer it as a late binding so this is the concept of early binding and late binding when compiler is able to figure out what method should be called then we call it as a early binding when compiler is not in the position to figure out which function to call then this concept is called as a late binding and obviously the program will figure out which function it has to call during the run time of a program let's add more to this program to understand early binding and late binding let's create one more sub one one more class let's call this class as sub2 and it should display sub2 now after this i'll use the same pointer oh, well, let's use the same pointer o and this time we will copy the address of s2 let's create a s2 object sub2 s2 and now we are copying the address of s2 in pointer and now call let's call o then arrow operator and then this now i am sure that you have figured out this is going to call the method from sub2 class and the output will be sub2 let's check oh, i've made a mistake i guess base o yeah i'm using the same variable i sh let's rename it let's rename it to o1 o1 yeah and now we can compile and try yes it's compiling and then you can clearly see that the output is base sub1 and sub2 now this has led to the output of sub2 and o1 this earlier call has led to the output of sub1 so like compiler is not able to figure out this it is happening at a execution time or run time of a program that when o1 was this is called at the first time it have address of s1 so it must call the method of sub1 class and the second call which is this while calling this even if we are using the same pointer now the address is of s2 so it is going to call the method of sub2 class 
so compiler is not able not in the position to identify which display function should be called so and this is happening at a run time so we call it as a late binding so one may argue that okay still uh, you have uh, like compiler knows that s1 is a object of sub1 and s2 is a object of sub2 and then compiler may figure out that uh, which class it has to bind, bind to and which method must be called now what if you have something like this let's add a function called as void fun which accepts object of or a, a variable of type base pointer p and in this we are saying p arrow does let's call this function fun and pass let's pass the address of s1 and second time let's call this fun and let's pass the object of s2 now we will change this this oh sorry not this one the method fun before calling we will see see out this is fun in line let's uh, put compile and run the program in line what has happened here one or operator is missing let me compile and run okay now it's working see here this is fun the sub one is called and second time again this is fun and now sub two is called so function how this method function will figure out the p is pointing to sub one or sub two so it is not possible for function to figure out whether p is pointing to sub one or sub two and it definitely going to happen during the runtime of a program so we call this kind of binding as late binding whereas when your program is in perfect position to figure out which display method has to be called in this case it knows that it is object of o and this disp method must be from the base class so in this case it definitely knows that it has to call the method disp of a base class so this is going to happen during the compile time so this is the early binding one more important point if i remove this virtual keyword from our discussion and if now we compile and run the program you can clearly see that every sub function call is been replaced with the call of base so this is the beauty of declaring function as virtual you are allowed to override this function in the sub classes and if you are uh, object of a sub class and pointed in that way then when you make a call to the uh, function does the function from your class or the sub class will be referred and not from the base class let's see it again let's add the virtual keyword and let's execute this entire program again so i i should sorry i should add this virtual keyword in base which from where we removed it and now let's try to compile and run so here you clearly see that now base keyword is replaced with particular uh, method of particular class that is sub1 sub2 sub1 sub2 so i hope you understood the word mini use of virtual keyword and this is the introduction to virtual function we are going to talk uh, more about it i hope you got the concept of early binding and late binding see you in the next video thank you